It just keeps spinning. There we go. All right. All right. Well, folks, if there's anyone out there, if you can hear us, go ahead and open up a chat box. Make sure you got audio open. Make sure you're seeing our first slide. And uh, chat in. Tell us where you're calling in from, what the weather's like, name of your restaurant, something you're hoping to learn today. We're going to get started here. We'll usually get started about two or three minutes after just to make sure people have a time. But early bird gets the worm. So we're monitoring chat. And tell, yeah, to... tell, us, tell us where you're from, right? Like, yeah. uh, but it's a beautiful day. I mean, I'm, you're, you're down in Texas where it's always beautiful, right? Uh, we're supposed to get, I'm hoping my, well, I mean, we should be okay. We're supposed to get some serious weather here in the next couple minutes. Oh, really? Awesome. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I hope the Christine. internet stays up. Yeah, I hope so. So we got Christine. I'm just going to kind of repeat these. Uh, Harvest Moon in Valley Village. Uh, Roger in Toronto. It's a warm and sunny day. David in Fairfax, Virginia. Sunny and 80. There we go. This is a lot different than a couple of weeks ago. No kidding. Yeah. And guys, uh, this is great. Keep it chatting. Make sure if someone could just, obviously, I know people could hear. Uh, so that's great. But if you could also chat in that you can see the first slide, it should be red text, learn the secrets to using online review sites. Um, just give me like a all good, thumbs up, we can see, something like that. Aloha yeah, uh, from Temecula. Oh, I'd love to hear that. Candy, Buffalo's finally warming up. Carla, California. Yep, we see that. Okay, awesome. So good. So, Michael, it's working. That, that always helps, right? <laughs> when you get the thumbs up that they can yeah, see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, Kathleen. Hey, how are you? Grilled Cheese Mania. Love it. I got your email earlier today. I'm so glad you're having three amazing years. That's fantastic. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It's coming in too fast here. Dimitri, all good. Frank. Is that Frank I know, Frank? Frank Hamburger, Frank? Peter... Great to be with you from San Francisco, Jimmy, Portland, by way of New Orleans. Yeah, I'm in uh, I'm in um, Texas by way of California. Jeremy, oh yeah, from uh, Ojai Brewing. How? Oh man, dude, you guys, you guys had a rough one this year. I'm glad that you guys got through that okay. Um, first the floods and then, or first the fires, then the floods. Man, I hate yeah, to say this, was, but yeah. I got out. I got out of Central California just in time. I hate to say that, but uh, Shauna, where are you in from? Hector, Puerto Rico. I mean, you guys had a tough year this year too. Goodness gracious! Hopefully, you got power. Obviously, you have power. You're on the computer. Beverly, Tennessee. Lisa, man, Covington, Georgia. Co Covington, Covington. I was just talking to someone, but not Covington, Georgia. They're in Covington. I have a client in Covington, Kentucky. Yeah. Okay. Can, yep. Uh, Daniel, Essex Seafood Company in New Jersey. Jeff, three years still in the business. Awesome. Jeremy, Bacon Software's made it. Thank you so much, Jeremy. Thank you. I'm so glad that Bacon's helping you guys out there. Uh, Frank, someone else from another another Frank from California. There's probably more than two Franks in the world, but that's awesome. Cool. Kevin, probably more from, than two Franks in California too, Ryan. Yeah, <laughs> from uh, Mikey's Wicked Good Pizza in Maine. Yeah, Jeremy. Oh, New Zealand. It's 8 a.m. Wednesday morning. That's so trippy. Uh, <laughs> Cape May, New Jersey. The Jambalaya Shop. Ah, oh, Louise, that sounds good. Some good jambalaya. Uh, Jimmy, I'm the other chef. We serve Louisiana Asian cuisine at Farmer's Market. Whoa, give me an example of how you're – like I do a lot of like Mexican and Asian. There's a lot of similarities there. I'd love to – like give me one example of your most popular dish of how you're merging like Cajun Creole with Asian cuisine. That sounds fun. What else is going That's on? That's an interesting combo. Right? This is awesome. So, guys, like two, three more minutes here. We'll get started. This is fantastic turnout. I'm so happy. And listen, there is a really <laughs> – there is always the possibility of – of technical challenges here. Michael and I were testing this out yesterday and things seem to go pretty well, but we've both used this software quite a bit in the past. If for any reason, if anything just appears that it's like totally frozen on you and we're talking about a slide that's, that's a slide that you're not looking at, if that does happen, hit the refresh button on your browser. Um, sometimes it'll appear that like, 
the whole webinar dropped off, but it just froze on your end. It does happen once in a while. So hit that refresh window um, and that works out pretty well. We'll repeat that again, but listen, also I'm gonna keep running off names here because I love it. For those of you that are, that are uh, able to do this, even if you're not able to do this, I think you kind of have to, close your door, take 30 seconds right now, go to the restroom, tell your staff that you're about to start a business meeting, Please don't treat this like, oh, I'm gonna get an hour of work done while this is on in the background. When is the last time you gave yourself the gift of learning something new that could dramatically, dramatically affect uh, your profits and you, the, the, just your operation in general, your business? So, you know, uh, when I register for webinars, because I, I love to attend these things too, I, I don't look at them as, just another opportunity to get some work done while I'm listening in the background. I close my door, I shut down, and I pay attention because there's always something you can learn here. So please, uh, Jimmy, po' boys and Korean style pork, Vietnamese slice with fried oysters and kimchi. That sounds so good. <laughs> Evelyn, it's 10 p.m. Where are you? Oh, Netherlands. Yeah. Uh, wow, we've got like the four corners of the globe covered here. We I do. saw, yeah, I saw some from India. I mean, England. We're all over the map here. This, this is awesome. awesome, Ryan. It's this very awesome. cool. Kathleen, shut your phone off. I like it. So, what do you say? Let's go one more minute. We're still getting people coming in every every minute now. So, for those of you who just uh, popped in, please just go ahead. We're just gonna take one more minute. Make sure we fill this up and get. Yep. Tell us where you're from. That you can see okay. That you can hear okay that everything's going good, Lee in Scotland, Joy, Augustina in Miami, welcome to Miami, bienvenidos a Miami, Nebraska, St. Louis, awesome, this is great. So uh, what do you say, Michael, you ready to get going? Let's do it, let's have some how, fun, Ryan, this is like many, a how fun many Red topic. Bulls? How many Red Bulls did you say you had? Yeah, I'm like three Red Bulls into it, so I'm, I'm raring to go, buddy. All right, well, I don't drink Red Bulls anymore because they make me <laughs> shake, but I, I do have like more of a natural, you know those like fizzy sticks that you can buy at Costco now? Yeah, you put in the water bottle and shake yeah. them up and they explode. Like, yeah, I yeah, get exactly. it. Exactly, just don't shake them up. And don't ever, for anyone out there, I learned this, I was with a client and I love bubbly water and so I went to his soda fountain, I got bubbly water and I poured one of those in there and it reacts <laughs> with the with the carbonation and it just exploded like everywhere <laughs> in his restaurant, which was super fun. So I got I got the privilege of mopping up the floor in his restaurant. But anyways, guys, uh, what a special guest here. I'm not going to bore you with the details of who I am. You guys have to hear it every time you watch one of my videos. But many of you don't know Michael. Uh, if you do, you probably participated in a couple of the previous promotions that we've done together, like No Peaking is the most recent one. What a fantastic promotion that was. We just got the surveys back. Something like 92% of the people who did the No Peaking thought that Michael and his team not only put together a fantastic promotion, but were super professional, how they handled it, and would totally do it again because the results were great. But for those of you who don't know who Michael is, Michael operates a couple of different businesses all under the same roof, but the only thing Michael does is drive traffic to restaurants. He is a past operator of restaurants, owns some catering business. He'll get into that more in detail, but basically, Michael is an expert in marketing, uh, driving traffic, getting customers to come through your front door. So I don't want to bore anyone with all that boring stuff because we want to train you today, but I'm going to turn it over. I'm going to sit back. I'm going to monitor chat. I know Michael's got someone monitoring chat. I'm going to jump in a little bit, but Michael, you ready to go ahead and take this? We're ready to rock and roll here, Ryan. Let's let's awesome. do this. It's we all got you, buddy. Some, appreciate it. We've got some awesome information that we're going to share with you guys today. And I just wanted to kind of outline it. Here's what you're going to learn, what we're going to go over during this presentation. Um, like Ryan said, you know, kind of shut everything off, shut your phone off, lock your door. This works for any restaurant. So it doesn't matter if you've got a pizza shop, if you've got an Italian, if you've got a Mexican, if you've got fast casual, if you've got fine dining, carry out. We, th these techniques that I'm going to share with you today work for any style, any location, any size of restaurant. So what I'm going to show you today is how to drive a herd of new customers using Google, Yelp, TripAdvisor, and Facebook. Okay, I know you guys probably heard about all the really cool things you can do um, on social media and review sites, and I'm going to kind of give you uh, the secrets and trips, uh, tips and tricks 
uh, from what our experience working with thousands of different restaurants. And I'm going to show you how to increase your star rating, get more five-star reviews. Everybody wants to have a, a five-star uh, reputation online. That's how you get more new customers, and I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. And by having a five-star review, you're able to crush your competition on Google and the review sites, which is super cool. Um, I'm going to get to show you how to get to the number one spot on Google, Yelp, and TripAdvisor. And this totally is going to blow you away. I'm going to show you how to turn a negative review into cash. And I'll show you exactly how to do that. And then on top of it, I'm going to give you my proven and tested three-step money-making review strategies that you can implement to increase sales in your own restaurant. Now, I call this my secret 40% sales bump, and I'm going to show you exactly how to do that a little bit later on in the webinar. Um, but right now, I know Ryan uh, gave me a real nice intro, and I call this my mercifully brief introduction. So just to give you a little background on myself, I know you know Ryan, but I'm known as a done-for-you marketing guy for restaurants. Um, and what I do is I help restaurant owners get more new customers and get their existing customers to come back more often and spend more money, uh, which is really cool. And I love working with restaurant owners, and I'll tell you why in a second. Uh, but I'm also an international speaker in North America on how to use reviews to increase sales. And I'm a published author in four different marketing books, uh, marketing consultant uh, to the independent restaurant industry, and I own a full-service marketing company that specializes in restaurants across North America. But my biggest accomplishment, I think, is I was an independent restaurant owner and caterer for over 21 years. So there's a picture on that screen of the last restaurant I sold, Waves, in St. Clair Shores, Michigan, which is still running, which is very cool. And a picture of uh, one of our old catering trucks, T-Bone Moore Catering. Uh, so I, I was a restaurant owner, caterer, long time. Ryan and I are a couple of old restaurant guys. Um, we love talking about, you know, helping restaurant owners out in the old days. Um, so I'm going to share a little bit about those experiences with you today. But why is this important to you? Why are we talking about review sites and how the heck do they get you more new customers? Uh, well, it's hard. It's really hard to get your customers' attention online. And for that fact, offline, I mean, we're bombarded with so many different marketing messages every day. But people are relying more and more on social proof. What I mean by that is what other people are saying about your business. It's kind of the norm now. And really, Amazon and Google changed our whole way of getting information about businesses and making a purchasing decision. I mean, who goes on Amazon now and doesn't look at the reviews before they buy something? Same thing with Google. Those stars like pop right out at you. So, I mean, we're trained to look at those reviews and the star ratings before we go to a business. And that's kind of the way uh, things are going for new customer acquisition. That's what we're going to talk about. And the way your new customers find you have changed. Um, I mean, they're Googling you. They're going online. 3.5 billion searches a day on Google. And I think my two teenage daughters account for most of those. Um, but uh, Google is the main search engine, 90% of the traffic online. It's the number one website in the world. So Google has a huge impact on how you attract new customers to your restaurant. Reviews are the new word of mouth. I mean, every restaurant owner wants uh, great word of mouth marketing, and reviews have kind of amplified that and replaced word of mouth marketing. And Ryan, I know you brought this up in your video. Yelp sucks. I mean, you just came out and you just said it. That's, that's pretty much the way it goes. Yelp sucks. So I'm going to try to give you some hints and some tricks that you can use, um, you know, to help you beat Yelp at their own game. So that's pretty cool. We're going to share a little bit about that today. And everyone is a food critic, right? I mean, how many times you walk through your restaurant, you see people taking pictures and sharing it with their friends and, you know, posting reviews and, you know, negative reviews are just a difficult thing to manage. And um, a lot of restaurant owners don't know how to properly answer a review or when they should answer a review and when they should, uh, uh, you know, apply to get it taken off. So we're going to kind of go over that and talk about that. But, you know, really it's about the game has changed. And, you know, I've been in the restaurant business a long, long time, um, and it's a heck of a lot different now than it was even five years ago. So things have changed, and how you get new customers and attract new customers have changed. 
I, I love this slide, little joke. So then I told them people still use the yellow pages, uh, which, you know, there's a good portion of your customer base out there that might not even know what the yellow pages are. Um, you know, a lot of millennials are like, yeah, what is that? Um, they think it just goes right into the recycle bin. Uh, so um, yellow pages, you know, the majority of your customers are using Google. They're using mobile phones to get information about your restaurant. This is all about being where your new customers are looking for you. That's what this webinar class is about. Um, just to give you a couple figures, and these are very interesting, and you want to pay attention to these. Uh, this is from a local consumer review survey, and these numbers are uh, up to date. And there might be kind of shocking, 92% uh, of consumers now read online reviews before trying a new business. And the, one of the number one categories on review sites is restaurants because people love to talk about their dining experience. Um, so the majority of your customers, before they even try you, are going online to see what other people are saying about your restaurant. 84% of them trust online reviews as much as a personal recommendation. The more reviews you have, the number does matter, um, is important because it adds so much more credibility. And 90% read less than 10 reviews before forming an opinion. 62% say the star rating is the most important. 73% say reviews older than three months are no longer relevant. That means you gotta keep filling that funnel with new reviews. 13% consider using a business that has only one or two stars, um, and 83% say positive reviews make them trust a local business. So, I mean, reviews are crucial to your new customer acquisition strategy. Filling your restaurant with a herd of new customers, that's what we want to do. That's our goal today, and that's what we're going to talk about. And I love this slide, food porn, right? I mean, you know, you walk through your dining room, People have their mobile phones out. They're snapping pictures. They're posting on Facebook, Instagram. They're Snapchatting. Hey, we're at you know XYZ restaurant having a great time. Um, I call it food porn. And they're posting it to review sites. We see, and with the, the advancements in mobile phones and advancements with cameras, we see more and more review sites that are including photos um, of the food. So uh, the photos uh, in the way your food is presented is very, very important. Um, here's something else. Now, this is from an actual client of ours. I call it a triple threat. And basically what we're talking about here is how things go viral online. Um, hey, you're going to get a negative review, right? We all know that. Um, and, you know, it's going to happen to everybody. What we want to do is to be able to control that. And, and unfortunately, in today's environment, in today's world, uh, people don't go on just one site. If you have an unhappy guest and they leave your restaurant um, without being satisfied, what we find is they're not going on just one review site. This particular uh, restaurant had an unhappy customer. They just pasted and uh, copied their negative review and posted it on Google, Yelp, and TripAdvisor. All three, it was the same review and they posted it all over the web. I mean, people are, they're review crazy now, right? I mean, that's their, that's their uh, voice. That's how they get the word out, and they feel vindicated now. The scariest thing for an independent restaurant owner is somebody that leaves and doesn't say anything if they had a problem, right? I mean, and then, then they take to the review sites and the web to let everybody know about it. So it's not like back in the old days where, you know, if you had a bad experience, you get on the phone, you tell maybe 10 or 15 people, now they're telling thousands of people, thousands of people. So you want to be able to control this before it gets out of hand. The fact is, getting a negative review is going to happen. But letting ha those people have a significant impact on the success of your restaurant isn't what you want. Okay? What you want to do is, if you ignore the impact of the online review sites, you're giving up control of your restaurant to a few negative people and that's not an accurate representation of the sample of your customers, right? So what I'm going to show you is how to take control of your online reputation and make sure that you're attracting a herd of new customers using Google and those review sites. Um, and it's just plain and simple. I mean, in today's world, you have to protect, manage, and leverage your Google listing 
and your online review sites to get new customers because that's where your new customers are looking for you and looking to get information about your restaurant. It's a little overwhelming. I know there's so many different review sites. Um, I mean, and this is just this slide shows just a sample of some of the review sites. I mean, they're popping up all the time. There's new review sites every month um, that we get uh, information at. Google, Zumato, which used to be Urban Spoon, TripAdvisor, uh, Super Pages, Yellow Pages. I, it's just it's unbelievable the amount of review sites that a business owner has to deal with today. Um, and it can be very, very frustrating, right? I mean, this is a good picture. Um, you're busy running your restaurant. I get it. I was a restaurant owner myself. I mean, you want to make sure that the food's coming out correctly, uh, that your servers are taking care of the floor. I mean, who has time to manage all these different review sites? It can be extremely frustrating and daunting for an independent restaurant owner. But you have two choices. I mean, you know, this is where your new customers are looking. You can either ignore this and it's going to stop potential new customers from finding and coming into your restaurant or you can take control and use Google and your review sites to attract more new customers to your restaurant. And I mean, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about taking control of your online reputation and leveraging that information. So what I'm going to share with you now is the exact three-step strategy that we use that's proven and tested to get new customers using your review sites and Google for restaurant owners. So I'll break it down for you. It's a, it's a simple strategy if you follow it in three different parts. Okay, the first part is monitoring your reviews. The second part is managing your reviews. And the third part is marketing your reviews to get more new customers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of break that down in each category uh, quickly and explain you how to do each one and why it's so important. The first part is to claim and optimize your listings. So I'll talk about claiming first. So if you know this or not, all these different review sites and uh, search engines have a listing for your restaurant. Okay, It's just like, believe it or not, I used to work for the Yellow Pages 30 years ago selling yellow page advertising and part of what we did was to make sure that the business listings were correct and we had all the business listings the review sites are the same as far as the yellow pages they want to make sure they have a complete listing that's how they uh, you know provide a service to their users um, same thing with Google they want to make sure that they have all the business list listed. So believe it or not, I mean, there's a listing for your restaurant created for all these different review sites and search engines. Okay, so you can you have two choices: you can ignore it or you can claim it and take control of it. Okay, because it's out there. Um, they they've created one for you if you know it or not. And now th here's another uh, tip for you: these each individual uh, review site has to be claimed by a human being. Please, please don't give money to any company that says, hey, we can claim all your review sites for you. We got this fantastic technology. It handles everything. You don't have to do anything. That's not the case. It has to be done by a human being because each one has a different verification process. Okay, some of them might send a postcard. Some of them, like TripAdvisor, wants you to have a utility bill. Um, and so, you know, it has to be done by a human being uh, to be able to claim and optimize your all your different listings. And you want to check. I mean, 90% of the time when we're claiming and optimizing a business listing for a restaurant, something's wrong. And, you know, it has like a huge impact on your business. A lot of them, you know, have uh, the businesses closed on days they're open or the hours are wrong or we do deliveries and you don't do deliveries. Um, I mean, that's a good portion of my business. People that come to me that want their listings fixed. So make sure you're checking out the information, you know, on these different listings across the uh, web about your restaurant. Now, I'll give you an example. This is an example of a client who came to me, um, Adobe Cafe. Fred, he's the owner. This is what an unclaimed listing looks like, okay? You can see there's no, there's no photo. There, there's no information about the restaurant, you know, basically. Um, so this is a TripAdvisor. He was listed 111 out of 217 restaurants. So you know, nobody's really finding him, okay? If you're not on the first page of TripAdvisor, very few people are scrolling through to page two, page three. Um, 
you know, and he had 47 reviews, and you can tell this is a non-optimized listing. All right, so what we did, this is what I mean when I say an optimized listing. After we got a hold of his listing, we claimed it, we optimized it, and what I mean by that, I'll show you exactly how to optimize a listing um, with pictures, descriptions of the businesses, and we started answering and generating more reviews. Now, Fred, Adobe Cafe is number three out of 227 restaurants, and he has 358 reviews. And I'll show you in a second how we generate more reviews, um, five-star reviews, which he has a 4.5 rating on TripAdvisor, which is awesome. Does this have an impact on your business? Fred sent me a note, sales up 29% since we broke the top 10 on TripAdvisor. Thanks for the magic, Michael. Fred Valdez, owner. Okay, there's a picture of Fred and his son who plays football. Um, claiming and optimizing has a big impact on where you're going to rank. Okay, so you want to make sure everything's claimed and optimized. What do I mean by optimize? You want to optimize all your listings across the web, but you want to have great photos. Okay, you want to make sure that you have good photos that you can upload. Photos of your food. Um, photos of, I, I like pictures with people in it, all right? Um, you know, I hate seeing an empty restaurant or, you know, a bunch of empty tables. I want to see people having fun. So do your new customers, okay? Um, and you can take a photo, you know, it, the way these uh, mobile phones are nowadays, I mean, you can take some really nice photos with your mobile phone. You don't have to hire a professional photographer, uh, but make sure you have some really decent photos uh, that you can add to your listing. Also videos. Videos are great um, to use as well. But tell your story. Your story. People want to know. Your new customers want to know. Hey, how did you get the name of the restaurant? How long have you been in the business? Why did you open up your restaurant? Tell your story. Your new customers want to know that. Put that in your description for your listings. And have your menu crawlable online. Now what I mean by that is crawlable Okay, Google is not going to recognize in a PDF image of your menu. Okay, you're losing out. Um, you need to have it crawlable. And what I mean by that is if you take your mouse um, and you scroll over and then you highlight it, um, if the text from the menu will highlight, that means Google can see it. Okay, if it's an image or a picture, a single picture, Google can't see that. So having a crawlable menu somewhere um, listed if it's on social media, if it's on one of the menu hosting sites on your websites, that's really important to optimize your listing. And fill out all your descriptions, fill in all those little details. That's really important as well. And put as many categories that fit. You know, if you're a fast casual, if you do carry out, if you do catering, if you have a banquet room, if you serve alcohol, um, handicap accessible, I mean, those type of things really help your new customers. So you want to pay attention to that. Now I'm going to give you a little test. And I know you're like, oh, man, nobody said there was going to be a test. Um, after the webinar, what I want you to do is type in your restaurant into Google. And I'll show you two different ways to do it. So you can see exactly what your new customers are seeing when they're looking for you online, okay? So the first way that I want you to do that is I want you to type in the category, just like a new customer would. So if you're looking for barbecue, this is one of our clients, Andy Nelson. Um, he's right outside of Baltimore. So type in, if you, for example, if you had a barbecue place, type in barbecue in your local area and see what comes up, okay? So I'm going to use Andy as an example. This is the first way new customers would find you. Or they're checking you out on your phone or their phone or their iPad, you know, whatever uh, piece of electronic they're using, you know, to find you or find a good barbecue restaurant, uh, per se, for this example. Okay, this is what I like to call total internet domination for new customer acquisition. All right, so Andy does a real good job. He's been a long time client of mine. Um, so when you type in barbecue in his local area, you pretty much have no other choice for barbecues. We dominate the first page of Google. Um, so Andy comes up number one. Now you can see the map and below the map, you're only gonna see three business listings. That's it. If you don't make it in the top three, they are not seeing you below the map. You show up on the map, but you're not going to show up on the Google business listing. And I'll show you what entail with that on the next page. But after that, and this happens all day long, Andy's website comes up because he has great traffic and he has very high ratings. Um, and after that, you're going to see a slew of review sites. Yelp listed twice, TripAdvisor. If the page went on, you'd see Zumato. Um, you're going to see the review sites. The reason you see that is 
because the review sites generate so much traffic and Google likes that and it has fresh in, uh, information and interaction with the public, okay? That's why you want to pay attention to these review sites because people are clicking on it and they're taking a look at these barbecue places, for example, in this local area. That's how they're getting information. Now, if you do a good job of managing your uh, review sites and your reputation, you can dominate the first page of Google. Like if you can see that, Andy Nelson's Yelp and TripAdvisor um, are the ones that are coming up after the website. So that's what I call total internet domination. I love doing this. Um, the second way that I want you to type into Google the name of your restaurant specifically in your local area, okay? Um, this is another client of ours, Aludius. He's uh, actually not in Columbia. He's right outside in Irmo, um, but he pulls a lot of business from Columbia. So some a new customer might have heard the name of your restaurant. They go to Google. They type in your name, um, and out pops up all the information. Now, the first thing they should see is your website. They don't see your website there's probably an issue with your website, okay? Um, now, on the right side, they're gonna see your Google business listing, which gives them all kinds of information about your business, your hours. For restaurants now, I don't know if you've seen this, it actually tells the um, people looking at your Google business listing when you're busy. It's kind of creepy, isn't it? Like Google knows, they do this through IP addresses and if people are logged into Google, but. I don't want to get into that, but they actually show people when your busy times are. And now they're starting to add wait times as well. Um, and the average time people spend at your restaurant, okay? So Google's giving them more and more information. But the thing they see first is your star rating, okay? And Aladius has an awesome 4.7 stars on Google, 282 reviews, all right? So that's like really compelling for a new customer when they're looking for information about this restaurant. They'll also show down at the bottom with the arrow, reviews from across the web. So they'll show Facebook, they'll show Zumato, they'll show TripAdvisors, and they'll show uh, three reviews from Google. They'll show a couple sentences. So Google's putting lots of emphasis on reviews, and that's why you wanna pay attention to it. But even after your website, you're gonna see review sites for your restaurant, and you're gonna see the stars. So obviously you gotta pay attention to this because this is what the new customers are seeing when they Google your restaurant. Next, you wanna monitor your reviews, right? I mean, after you know you claim and optimize, you got everything running smooth, um, you wanna know what people are saying about you across the web. And that's because that's what your new customers are looking at. They're looking at your reviews, they're looking at what other people are saying about your restaurant. And I always get this question, Mike, which ones are we supposed to watch? I mean, you know, there's so many of them out there. Which ones am I supposed to take a look at? Well, if you do it analytically, you want to look at, and I can guarantee you Google is obviously one of them that you want to pay attention to. And then you want to pay attention to your top three. That's going to drive about 99% of your review traffic. Typically for a restaurant, it's going to be Yelp. I know Yelp sucks and it's hard to manage, um, but they're out there and they drive a lot of traffic for restaurants. So it's going to be Yelp. It's going to be TripAdvisor. Um, Facebook is huge now. I love Facebook because it's more positive than Yelp. Um, Zumato, Yellow Pages. Uh, but mainly we're looking at Yelp, TripAdvisor, and Facebook, and definitely Google. So if you do Google in your top three, you're paying attention to those. You're doing pretty well. And you want to answer your reviews. Now, what we do is we answer reviews for our restaurant clients, okay? Um, and I'll give you uh, some examples and how to answer and deal with positive and negative reviews. Now, our philosophy is when we write a review, we write it for everyone else. We don't write it for the restaurant owner. We don't write it for the person that wrote the review, although that's important, and I'll show you how to do that in a second, but we write it for the rest of the world because that's who's looking at it, okay? They look at how you respond. They read the response to these reviews, and people are shocked when restaurant owners and business owners, as a matter of fact, respond to the reviews. It means so much. So real quick, um, this was actually posted on our Facebook page for the, our company. Tori Nelson, he owns a restaurant in Colorado, um, longtime restaurant client of mine, and so we answer his reviews for him. This person on TripAdvisor went on, I'll read it real quick. My wife and I recently traveled to Estee Park, that's where his restaurant's located. We looked online to find the best place to eat. We were overwhelmed with the numerous four to five star choices. Wapiti stood out because it was the only restaurant 
where management responded to every customer review. That's something that is not often seen, but shows a commitment for reading and caring about customers' opinions. That is huge. Um, and it was nice, uh, Tori put, this stuff really works. Thanks, Michael, appreciate it. So the simple fact of paying attention, responding to these reviews, listening to people, I mean, they went through the trouble of posting a review about your restaurant. You wanna show that you care and that you pay attention. It has a huge impact on new customer acquisition. And you wanna to respond to the good reviews and the not so good, but the good ones. So this is another client of ours, Cognitive Donuts. Um, so this particular client, uh, had a positive review on Yelp. I know, positive review on Yelp. But see, there's an example of a pitcher, blueberry fritter. Man, those things are awesome. Um, so what you want to do is you want to thank the person for the review, and you also want to reference something specific from their review in your response, okay? Because that shows you don't want to copy and paste the same response. It looks, you know, cookie cutter. It looks like there's not a real person. It looks, if everything's the same, it looks like you didn't even read it. So you don't want to do that. You have to have a human being looking at these things and answering them, okay? There's a specific way to do it, and I'll tell you about it in a second. Um, but you got you to, this is huge, Ryan. They got to pay attention to these negative reviews. Um, negative reviews can have a very big impact on you getting more new customers in your restaurant, okay? You don't want negative reviews sitting out there longer than 48 hours because it can damage your online reputation, all right? Um, I'm very serious about this, uh, and I'm a huge proponent of, you know, managing your online reputation because it's crucial to getting new customers, all right? Um, so I'll give you an example. This is Al Odias, the Italian restaurant I was telling you about uh, a couple slides ago. He got a negative review on TripAdvisor, all right? Um, and it, the lady was upset. There was a two-hour wait. A great problem to have, right? I mean, Adam's busy. She was there on a weekend. She had eight people. They couldn't seat her. She put in the review, the hostess just couldn't seem to figure it out. Um, so they were unable to seat him and she was upset. She wasn't complaining about the food, I mean, or anything else. They never even got in the restaurant. It was just they waited a couple hours and still couldn't get sat. Understandable. So we wrote the response for Adam and posted it. Um, now check this out. We appreciate your patronage and uh, taking the time to uh, reflect and send us the review. I wanted to personally reach out to you and apologize and offer to make amends uh, for your unsatisfactory visit. Please contact us directly, and then there's an email address that goes right to Adam, okay? That is huge. You wanna tell them, take it offline, okay? You, you ever heard of Amy's Baking Company uh, down in Scottsdale, Arizona? It's my favorite. Brian, I know it's your favorite too. Um, the Gordon Ramsay, uh, you know, where she gets into a fight uh, with Yelp, and that's the only episode I think Gordon Ramsay walked out on. All right, that so that episode was amazing. <laughs> we got to go there, right? I mean, it <laughs> sounds like a field trip. I think they're back open now. It'd be a lot of fun. Um, but I mean, you know, you you have to be able to manage this, and this stuff goes viral. Let me show you what happens when you manage a negative review properly. Okay, this is how you take a negative review and turn it into a positive. They this person went back to the restaurant um, a couple days later after she posted the, the review. I know it might be hard to see, so I'll read it. She sent this email to Adam. Thank you for your response to my review on TripAdvisor. I appreciate the fact you took the time to respond. I did go back for lunch yesterday and had a great waitress and great service. I was celebrating my birthday. I took three friends. They all enjoyed the food and will return soon. Can you believe that? I mean, basically, it was because we responded to the review. We paid attention to this person. We understood they had a bad experience um, at the restaurant. We reached out to them, and we said, hey, we want to make this right. We apologize. We're sorry. We took ownership you know, of the issue and told them, hey, reach out to us. We want to make this right. She never even emailed. She was so impressed that we responded to the review. She went back in and took three of her friends. That's how you take a negative, turn it into a positive. That's how you take a negative review and turn it into a positive cash flow. Now, Aladius ranks number one out of 812 restaurants. He has a, over 1,100 reviews on TripAdvisor. He's not even in Columbia where he's ranked number one. That's the big area. He's in a strip mall, okay? Um, and he's in Irmo, South Carolina. So he's about 20 miles outside of South Columbia. He's busy. He's so busy, he just opened up his second restaurant a couple months ago, and he's doing fantastic. 
This is the original location. He's in a strip mall, and you can see inside the restaurant. And I think this is during the week. He sent me a little note. We're up $6,355 on a Tuesday. On a Tuesday. Um, so he's busy during the week, too, which is awesome. Thanks to Michael and the Done For You Online Reputation Management Team. We're consistently up in sales each and every week since we started with Restaurant Review Manager. Lineups out the door are now the norm even during the week. My biggest problem is where to put all the new customers. Adam. And that's his beautiful wife, Betsy, owners, Alodias, Cochina, Italiana. I mean, that's just awesome. I love to hear stories like that. Reviews have such a huge impact. So let me give you some hard and fast rules for answering a review, okay? Um, so these, this is pretty much sums it up in some easy to implement points when you're answering a review. You want to answer a negative review back within 48 hours, right? You don't want to leave anything out there longer than that um, because it could be very damaging to your reputation. It's going to affect how... You would, how many new customers you attract, all right? Positive reviews, you know, you got five even, you can stretch it to seven days, okay? That's a little different. Um, you know, you just want to make sure that you are responding to those, paying attention to your customers. Um, always thank them for leaving a review and their feedback, all right? They took the time to leave you a review. You want to make sure that you're thanking them for that um, nice gesture, and it means a lot, goes a long way. If necessary, apologize. Take ownership of whatever didn't go right, and then ask them to reach out to you privately offline. Take it offline, okay? Don't get into a, a, a viral war with um, any customer for your restaurant. I don't care how mad you are. You're not going to win. Don't ever pick a fight with somebody online, a customer on a review site or social media. They will make it their personal mission to take you down. They will get all their friends together, okay? Don't ever write a review mad. Um, that is a huge thing. Get somebody, wait at least 24 hours before you even craft a response, okay? I'm a restaurant, you know, I'm a previous restaurant owner. I get it. It's our lifeblood. It's our baby. We care about it. And we get really upset when somebody, you know, and I can give you a slew of examples. Um, but we, wait for a cooling off period. Then have somebody else read it before you post it. That's huge, okay, um, if you're answering back a never negative review. But take it offline. And always use something specific from the review in your reply so they know it's not just a cut and paste um, response. Invite them back in. We do that consistently. And I love mentioning uh, another event. Hey, you know, thanks so much. I'd love to see you back in the restaurant. Did you know, by the way, we have a great 4th of July party coming up. Um, love to see you there. I mean, use it to help, you know, um, get more new customers because there's going to be a bunch of people that are reading your reviews. Next step, you want to update and stoke and poke your listings. Ryan, do you remember Pac-Man? Are you old enough to remember that game? I had, my dad was in the coin-operated arcade game business, and I had a Miss Pac-Man, like a full-size one, in my room growing up. So you enjoyed it. You, you like oh, Pac-Man. I love Pac-Man. I was epic at Pac-Man. There you go. So Pac-Man, the, the yellow monster that eats all the dots, that's Google, okay? So if you can think of the Pac-Man as Google, all right, and what I call is feed the Pac-Man. You want to get to the top of Google. You want to be, you know, on the top three in those maps. This is what you need to do, all right? Google, think of Google as that Pac-Man eating up the little dots. The little dots are information about your restaurant, all right? Number one, first and foremost, you want to answer your reviews. Google loves reviews. You want to get to the top of Google, you got to answer those reviews. Add new photos, add new videos, go in and update your Google business listing. Update your review listings every six months, okay? It's going to help your SEO, search engine optimization. It's going to get you to the top. That's what you want to get more business. Get more reviews. That's huge. Google loves that. Do some social media posting on Facebook, uh, you know, Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter, whatever your flavor is. Uh, get some comments from your customers, new designs. All these things are going to help you get to the number one spot on Google. So you might be wondering, hey, how do you get more positive reviews, right? Well, one thing is you got to ask. Um, you know, and there's a great way to do it that I'll show you an example in a second, but through an appreciation survey. The reason I love using surveys is because you know these people like your restaurant before you ask them for a review. It's kind of a techie thing, um, but what we do is when we survey people, they score over an 80%. We'll ask them to review us on a highly targeted review site, one for a restaurant you know, that we're working on that we want to increase their ratings. Um, put signage in and outside of your restaurant. Have a reviewer party. 
that's kind of an advanced strategy. Yelp does that, believe it or not. I've done it with quite a few clients. It works fantastic. Like, you, you know, if you had a new menu you're rolling out, you have, kind of have a taste test, um, you know, and you invite these Maven Yelpers in. But that's an awesome thing to do to really boost your Yelp rating. Get your staff involved, right? Have them uh, ask reviews, uh, you know, from your best customers. Um, use it to manage your staff. I'll talk about that in a second, which is really cool. Have a review coach, somebody outside or inside your business. QR codes, put them on the table tents. I've seen QR codes on the back of catering vans, um, all different kinds of vehicles. Hang it in your restroom. Please, as a marketing guy, this kills me, Ryan. When I walk into a restaurant, I go into the bathroom, and they sold the marketing space in their bathroom, um, their restrooms, to an advertising company for like 50 bucks a month. You know, like that, that's such prime real estate for marketing anything for a restaurant or four walls marketing. Don't give that up. Um, ask for reviews in your newsletter, emails, on your website, business cards, huge. I'll show you that in a second on the bottom of your receipts. So how to increase rankings on your Google and get more new customers. Here's an example of a client of ours, Vito's Bakery, number one in Michigan, by the way, uh, for cannolis. Um, so he came, he came to me and said, Mike, can you help me out? Like, we're not showing up on page one of Google. Uh, we want to, you know, inc increase our rankings. We want new, more new customers. So this was their listing um, before. Pretty good. They had 35 reviews, 4.6 uh, stars, which is not bad. But they wanted more reviews to help their SEO and move up. So this is what we did. We sent an email to their customers, their best customers, asking for a Google review, right? So we sent a simple email, had the stars with a hyperlink to their Google account. Check this out. Three days after we sent the email, 52 more five-star reviews, okay? That shot them up to the number one spot under their business category on Google on page one. Two, now, I just took this the other day, 245 reviews. They went from 47 to 245 reviews in a very short period of time. Um, and Tom Vitale, that's the owner, he sent me a little note. Thanks, Mike. Since you took over online Google and review sites, our sales are up over $73,898 for the year. This stuff really works. Tom Vitale, the owner. And I love cannolis. Obviously, a lot of people do. Um, but that's how you get to the top of Google on the first page into that coveted three spot, more reviews. Now, stars, you might be going, yeah, what do these stars mean? Like, you know, he's been talking about, the, you know, your star rating. You see them across the web. Um, basically, I'll give you real quick, Berkeley uh, uh, Business School did a study. This was pretty cool. Took a 1,000 restaurants, and they worked with them for three years upgrading their star rating. So what they did is they took their sales um, at the beginning of this three-year period and afterwards, and they found that every star that they were able to increase on the rating equated to a 9% sales increase in business. So there is a dollar amount that's attached to these stars um, and it does increase your new customers uh, for your restaurant. So you want to pay attention to your star rating. Um, here's the pro tip, okay? Uh, you want to send your customers to a survey first if you have the technology to do this, all right? Um, because if you send out a blanket email, who knows, right? But if you can send them to a survey first and they rate you um, above a certain percentage, then you know, hey, let's ask these people uh, for a review. Okay, so it's a pro tip. It's a little more advanced strategy, but it works really, really well, and that's what we use for vetoes. Um, market and leverage your five-star reviews. Real quick, you want to post this across your social media. Why not, right? Um, it's so much more powerful what other people are saying about your restaurant. I love this. This is one of our clients. So what we do is we create a template in Facebook, and then once a week uh, we post um, you know, positive reviews for our clients. I love this. This is a donut shop down in Wells, Maine, and also a restaurant. And he would give 15 stars his customer if he could. I love this. Cognans, Tom Brady, breathing in that order. I mean, we leverage the heck out of this review. That's what you want to do with your five stars. It really helps for new customer acquisition. So really quick, I want to jump yeah. in here. It's okay. So in Austin, I'm new to the area, and I'm driving down the street. <clears throat> There's a restaurant here called Raising Canes. I'm not familiar with it until we moved out here, but they're like a competitor to Zaxby's. They're, they do chicken fingers. They have a billboard, and the billboard is just – it's a one-sentence review on the billboard from their Yelp page that somebody posted. They took that review, put it on a billboard, and the review was strong enough to get me to try the restaurant. 
But I'm saying that was it. Not a if it was just a picture of food or a picture of anything else, I never would have. You know, whatever. How many chicken restaurants are there in the world? But talking about leveraging your good reviews when you get them, again, I don't completely know the legalities of it. You can talk about that more. But it's public. They put it out on the internet. It's public. You can use this stuff again and again. Absolutely, and that's right. You hit you hit it right there. This is public information posted on the web. So when they post that, yes, they give you the rights to use that because it's open to everyone. So I, you know what, Ryan, I call that a writer downer. I'm putting billboard on this list. All right, I'm adding it on. So you know, what do you want to do to get more new customers and leverage those good reviews? Put them on your website. Like TripAdvisor, Yelp, they all have plugins that you can put on your website or just list them on there so you're in control. Use them in your print marketing. Use them across your social media on your Instagram page, your Facebook, like we do for our clients for their Facebook page. Use them in your four walls marketing. I did this when I had my restaurant. I called it the wall of fame. So you get people, you're reinforcing the buying decision. They come in and they're standing there waiting to get a seat. Why not have a wall of fame with all your reviews you know, across your review sites? And they go, yeah, this is a great place. I'd love that. Plus, people like seeing their name up on the wall. Put it in the bottom of your emails. Use it for feedback to help manage your staff. Geez, if, you know, Julie did a great job last night uh, serving table 34 and they posted a review on Yelp in 5 o'clock lineup, let them know, Julie, you did a great job. Here's a couple tickets to, uh, you know, the movies this weekend, okay? You know, use it to help manage your staff. You can use it the other way, too. You know, you realize, hey, I might have a problem with this hostess because I've gotten three reviews, you know, during the time frame, and, you know, she might not be doing her job. So, you know, you can use it both ways, but it really helps. Let little story here real quick, Annie Nelson's Barbecue, um, the power of leverage in your review. This is a perfect example. That's Andy on the left, Andy Jr., Andy Sr. on the right. He actually used to be a, a defensive back for the Baltimore Colts uh, back in the 60s. Um, and uh, when he retired from professional football, he opened up a barbecue place. Nothing fancy. It used to be an auto repair shop. You can see there's a picture of it. Uh, it's got a big pig on there. I've been there. Awesome barbecue. On the right, uh, it used to be an auto repair, so the garage doors goes up. He calls it the pigskin palace. It's a it's a lot of fun and awesome barbecue. So this is what we manage Andy's online reputation. We leverage his five-star reviews, which he gets a ton. Andy, believe it or not, a little barbecue place right outside of Baltimore. He was voted the fifth best barbecue in America by TripAdvisor. Fifth best in the country, not, not a city, not the state, the entire country, okay? 37% increase in sales. That was huge for him. Andy's busy. This is a picture. You can tell it's nothing fancy. Bunch of people standing around. It's counter service, but they love him, okay? And we leverage those five-star reviews. You can tell it's chock full of customers. He sent me a note. Love to get notes from our clients. Michael and his team are the missing ingredient for us to get to the top 10 of the entire country for our restaurant at TripAdvisor. They're up 37% over sales. ton of new customers come in and say that they saw the article and read about us on TripAdvisor. Made a huge impact on sales. This stuff works. Okay, so what would it mean to your restaurant sales if you had tons of positive reviews and you were rated among the top restaurants on Google and your review sites in your city, your state, in the country, okay? And take a look at this picture. I've been there. I know. You're busy as a restaurant owner. It takes a lot of time and a lot of effort to manage this and to use it effectively. So to get more new customers and protect your online reputation, just like we went over you got to claim them. You got to optimize your listings. You got to monitor uh, what people are saying. You got to market those five star reviews. You have to manage by responding to your reviews and updating your listings. You have to answer all your good reviews and your not so good reviews. So that's what I call the three M's of review success. Um, so being a restaurant owner, transition to a marketing guy to help out independent restaurant owners get more new customers. We came up with a couple years ago, Restaurant Review Manager. And just give me a couple minutes, I'm gonna tell you exactly what we do that can put this on autopilot uh, for you to help okay. manage your online reputation and get more new customers. Michael, can I just jump in here for one quick second? Absolutely, Ryan. So the one thing that I think, <clears throat> the first time I saw some of these techniques is, the feeling of being in control for the first time. 
like I'm seeing a lot of the comments here and people are asking some great questions. How do we do this? How do we do that? There's a lot of comments about, you know, fake restaurant in London that got to number one before they even opened or something like that. Like it feels like it's rigged against us. It feels like it's out of our control sometimes and that we're just passive in this process. But through some of the things you were showing here and I know some of the stuff you're about to show here is if everyone just at this point can can understand that we are in control of this process more than we think. Some of the techniques are a little advanced and, you know, we didn't get into too many details here, but let's just understand that on the spectrum of not being in control of your reviews to being in control of the reviews is a total possible gap to close. You, you can go from feeling like you don't have any control over this and Yelp is just one of those places that you hate to falling completely head over heels absolutely in love with Yelp because of the amount of business they can drive to your restaurant. If you had four and a half stars and a thousand reviews, your restaurant would be substantially busier than it is now and you can control that. And to Sorry, be, I'm done. you know, and, and no, thank you very much, Ryan. And to be, you know, in the top spots. And that's really what we're pushing for. I, you know, I want all my clients to be on page one you know, of Google in the top three spots on the map. Um, and that's what, you know, we're aiming for. And we test, we test, we test. You know, we know what works. This stuff changes all the time. It's, you know, it never stays the same. Nothing on the internet or the web stays the same. But you have to be paying attention to this because of the amount of traffic. And this is where your new customers um, are searching for you to get information. Yelp, my clients love Yelp, believe it or not. Once, you know, they don't have to deal with the headache and they can see what a tool it can be to increase sales, they actually love Yelp. So let me tell you a little bit about what our system does. And it's a done for you system because I know you're you're busy as a restaurant owner. I was there, I, you know, I know exactly what you're going through. So our restaurant review success system includes, first and foremost, your own personal online review manager, okay? It's not, this isn't just technology. It's not automated. You can't do that. You need a human being managing your online reputation because they have to read the reviews, um, they have to answer the reviews, and they need to be trained specifically to know how to do that. So our online review managers are trained in the field that they work. Um, so they know restaurants, they know restaurant customers, and they obviously know review sites. And you're right, Ryan, we didn't go over a lot of the specifics just because we don't have the time. And you know what? Restaurant owners just really want it done for them and they want it done right. So, you know, that's why we created this system. And what we're going to do is we're going to claim and optimize your Google business listing. So if it's already claimed, we're going to get all the information is correct, and we're going to optimize it, you know, with the photos. Uh, we're going to optimize it with all the correct information and categories. We're going to get in there and, you know, poke around, make sure everything is working the way it's supposed to be. Same thing, we're going to claim and optimize your top three review sites. You know, and we'll figure out what those are. With our software, we're able to see, okay, you know, the majority, 99% of the traffic is coming from Google and these three review sites. So that's what we're going to focus on. Then we're going to monitor all your reviews on Google and your top three review sites, okay? So we know exactly what people are saying when they're saying it. Then we're going to respond for you to all your reviews on Google and your top three review sites. Now let me tell you how this works because this is important. You get a positive review. We're going to answer that for you. I don't bother you with the positive reviews. You're busy, right? I know you're busy, and our online reputation managers are trained very well in how to respond to this, okay? But the negative reviews, what we're going to do is send you a copy of the negative review and our proposed response. Now, you have 48 hours, 72 hours, whatever, you know, you, the parameters you pick to respond to us and let us know, hey, I changed this. You know, um, we have a lot of clients that, take it upon themselves to really tell us what they feel about the review and then they go, yeah, you might as you better post yours because if we post mine, I'm going to get into trouble. Um, well, you know, it's just kind of funny. But we're going to get that posted so you're covered and protected with your online reputation within that specific time frame. Then we're going to create the templates and market your positive reviews for you on Facebook every week. And we're going to update your listings quarterly, okay, because Google, like I said, loves fresh information. Um, and you're going to get membership in our Restaurant Review Manager 2.0 online website, okay? This is cool. I know you're busy, all right? You don't want to look through a bunch of reports, but you want to know, hey, where do I stand? How many reviews did I get last month? How many positive? How many negative? 
how am I trending? What are my top review sites? You're going to get a one page uh, a homepage customized for your restaurant with all that relevant information that's updated monthly. So you can look and you can see how many reviews we did, how you rank against other restaurants. It's going to show you your trends, okay? Then you, everything's clickable. You can click on it. It's going to dial down to those individual reviews. Also, Ryan, I didn't show you this. This is really cool. I was kind of saving this as a surprise. Um, it's called Trending Topics with our software. So our software now analyzes what people are saying, and it ranks it according to good okay and bad red is bad green is good so you can actually look at what people are saying about your restaurant um, in this graphic click on the bubble and it'll take you to those specific reviews so if Julie comes up with a red bubble you click on it and she's got three reviews because people don't like her at the host stand you'll know that that's what I meant by using your reviews as a management tool for your staff and improving your restaurant. I mean, it's great. It's like current quick information from people that are real customers um, that are frequenting your restaurant. So this is included with your membership. Also, you get the done for you five-star review accelerator system with the surveys um, and the emails, and we customize that for each restaurant. So you know exactly um, who your best customers are, and those are the ones that we're targeting to ask for reviews. Okay, this again, this is kind of a, you know, uh, a higher level strategy, involves some technology, but I want you to know it's customized for your restaurant. Um, and we all know, listen, you know, if you're on the webinar uh, this far, you understand, you get it. Reviews are important to you, the success of your restaurant. It's how your new customers are finding you. And, you know, if, if you're not, if you don't have the time to do this, you got to have an employee do it or you got to hire somebody like me to do it, Okay. Because the real cost of employee, we know if you bring somebody in, we all have employees. You got employer taxes, you got workman's comp, you got other insurance paid benefits, you got overhead, you got the wages. I mean, it all starts to add up and it gets expensive. But you can't ignore this, you got to pay attention to it. So, what we've done is created a program for restaurant owners. The full done for you online restaurant review management marketing system is only $297 per month. Now that's special pricing because you're a subscriber or a client of Ryan's and he twisted my arm. So um, yeah, we, we definitely come out with the best pricing uh, for restaurant boss clients, uh, $297 per month. But you know, Ryan Ryan's a tough guy, um, so he negotiates really well. He's like, Mike, you gotta do a little bit better got to do a little bit better for my members today. So what we're doing today, if you sign up in the next 48 hours, is $200 off your first month. Okay, so that drops the price down to $97. All right, so it's $200 off for being on the webinar um, so far. And also, I always get this question, uh, you know, what's the contract? What's the commitment? What's the time frame? That's the beauty of this program. I call it my no BS, make you money, make you happy guarantee. There's no contract, Ryan. There's no contract. There's no six month, there's no three month. I know once we get a client on, a restaurant client, they're so happy that they, they love us and they don't go away. So it's not necessary for me to have some long-term contract, okay? Um, so there's no contract, it's month to month. If you don't like me, fire me, okay? We put our money where our mouth is. We are proven, um, tested, formula for success. Now here's something special that I haven't done before. Okay, this is the first time um, and I'm happy to do it with Ryan, your subscribers, because I love your list. You guys are awesome. I love working with independent restaurants. Um, what I'm going to do is for the first 11 people that take advantage of this offer, I'm going to do a free one-on-one -on -one marketing strategy session for an hour, 60 minutes. So what you do is you, you book an appointment, you get on the phone with me, and I'll look at your website. I'll look at your social media. Um, you know, we can talk about uh, any print marketing. We can talk about promotions. We can talk about what's working now with restaurants in your area. Um, I'll get on the phone with you. We'll break it all down. I'll draw up a marketing strategy. We'll plan out your marketing for the next three months, okay, and you're going to walk away with an actionable plan. Now, this is very, very special. I don't do this. Um, and I haven't done this with any other groups. But Ryan and I are such good friends. Um, I, I definitely wanted to offer this and give everyone the opportunity. I can't do it for everyone. Um, so the first 11 people 
that uh, take advantage of this offer will get the certificate to book the one-on-one -on -one appointment with me. Very, very special. Also, we're going to do uh, we're going to send you free business cards and table tents customized for your restaurant. Ryan, I know you're a big proponent of this. Um, I love the business cards, right? For the the servers, uh, one side is you know if you want Yelp, if you want Google, um, you want to target you know whatever review site, um, and the other side is just simply a bounce back. Hey, thanks a lot. Appreciate you coming in. Here's a free chocolate chip cookie or free appetizer, free dessert, um, and also on your table tents. Okay. So we're going to print those and we're going to send them to you for free, customized for your restaurant. Works well, doesn't it, Ryan? Yeah, and the important this is a strategy I came up with about five years ago. And the important thing here is forget about the chocolate chip cookie. It could be whatever works in your restaurant, uh, half off an appetizer or something. But there's two things that are happening here. One, you're not allowed to bribe for for reviews. I mean, if you get caught by like Yelp or Google or one of those, like saying if you give us a review, we'll give you a discount or we'll give you something. They will red flag your account. You will get warnings all over it. I have seen it happen. It could be the death of your business. So this is not a bribe. This is a manager or you walking around. How many times have you had conversations with people at the table that are like, my gosh, like the food here is amazing. We love it. This is our first time here. We didn't even know you guys were here. Someone told us about it. And in your head, you're thinking the whole time, well, why aren't you putting this online? Why aren't you giving us a review? This is amazing. But why aren't you telling the whole world about this? So that used to frustrate me. So what we did was we, we, gave, we basically came up with this about five years ago. And we said, here, thank you so much. I'm so glad you loved the experience here. Come back next time and here's a free dessert or a half off on an appetizer on us, right? Just a thank you. Then when they have the card in their hand, you say, and if you wouldn't mind flip over the card, there's our Yelp page and our Facebook page or whatever you want on the back. Now, when we first did this, it worked great. That was before all the technology that Michael's company leverages with, where now they can give you a one question, they can answer a survey, and then based on how they answer that survey, we can either send them to Yelp or we can send them a message saying, we're sorry that you didn't have a great experience, right? We can sort of triage the review. I'm getting into the weeds here, I don't want to. Um, but the point is, this is a strategy that works. It looks archaic, I understand, but it works. It works so well. And again, they're just going to do this for you. It's something you don't have to think about and you don't have to do. Exactly. And sometimes the old old school methods really work well. So we're going to take care of that for you. We're going to send those to you for free. We're going to customize them. Um, so your total savings today, your membership in the Done For You Restaurant Review Manager System, $200 off your first month. You get the one hour strategy session with me one-on-one -on -one for the first 11 people that sign up. $450 value, the customized table tents and business cards, $176, no contract, make you money, no BS guarantee, priceless, the total of today's free bonuses, $826, you get all that for $97 for this webinar special only. Now you're going to see a uh, box that pops up on the right side, um, and it should say join now with the $200 off coupon, and if you click the join now, it's going to take you uh, to the special order page that we set up for this particular group, and it's not going to be up there long, so you want to make sure you get on and take advantage of it. It's going to take that $200 right off. Remember, no contract, and you can start right now today for no, only $97, okay? So I'm going to leave that up there. You don't want to ignore this. Please, please, please. It's way too important for the success of your restaurant and driving in more new customers. Um, pay attention to those reviews. You want to answer them. Um, you want to monitor them and you want to update them. Take control of your online reputation, please. And you want to be where your new customers are looking for you. They're looking for you on Google, Yelp, TripAdvisor, Facebook. It's it, the reality of the situation is where your new customers are searching for information about you. I think you got that from what I've shown here today. Um, so for those of you that take action, it brings about changes, and it's going to bring good things for your restaurant, okay? Action changes th things. Love that saying. Um, so you can click the button to the right, which says join now. It's going to take you to that special page, or you can just type in O-R-M-B-O-S-S. -S. That's O-R-M-Boss.com in your browser, and it'll take you to the page. So I hope, it, Ryan, I had a great time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you stick around for a couple minutes and answer a few questions? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Cool. Um, 
Yeah. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Before, before we do that, I always love to tell this story. Um, when I was maybe 19 years old, I was making minimum, minimum wage, like six fifty an hour. I had, I had culinary school behind me. I had five star hotel behind me, but I was working as a cook in a five star hotel making less money than I was worth, but I was putting in my time. I couldn't really afford anything. And I'm driving to work in a, in an old stick shift Mustang. Luckily I'm going down a hill. Anyone who knows the 405 freeway, I'm going down a hill and I put my foot on the clutch to change gears and the clutch goes straight to the floor, which means the clutch is burnt out. Now I had no idea this was about to happen, but luckily I'm going downhill. So I, I can't get into any gear and I glide and I glide and I find an exit and I know there's a gas station there. I pull off the exit I park the car at the gas station and then there's a bus stop. I hop on the bus to work. The point of the story is that I put a note on the car. About three hours later, I get a phone call. It's going to be about 650 bucks or whatever it was to fix the transmission and the clutch and whatever happened. What choice did I have? I had no choice. It was my car. Sure. Go ahead. Put it on the credit card. What choice do I have? I was freaking out for a day or two. And then the reality is money replenishes. And that was an important lesson that I learned there because I used to freak out about certain things, but sometimes you just don't have a choice. And I did it, and then I never thought about it again. I figured out a way to pay the bill. And the only reason I say that is sometimes it's easy to look at this, and I, we've heard a few people say, I can't afford that or whatever. But the question isn't, can you afford it or can you not? It's about someone doing all of your marketing for you and you not having to worry about it. It's about the thing that a lot of people have hated the most, Yelp, online reviews, right? We're seeing the comments here and not having to worry about it at all. I know some people are gonna have some detailed questions here and we'll get to them about hows and there's a guarantee question, we'll get to that, but just for a moment, think about what it would be like to not have to worry about your online review sites and know that a company who does this for restaurants, who's trained the people in his company, is gonna be doing it 100% for you. So, that, um, yeah, that's huge, you know, and, and I mean, I, I, I'm not, you know, I love, restaurant owners because I've been one. I help out, you know, my buddy who owns a huge catering company here in Michigan. It's in my blood. And you know, you know, as well as I do, you know, once you're in the restaurant business, you, you're like, you're in, like, you know, how many people you talk to? Oh man, I waited tables. I, you know, uh, cooked in the back of the house. I mean, as a restaurant owner, you kind of do everything. And one of my favorite sayings in the restaurant is you can't make a hundred thousand dollars a year chopping carrots right? Like, you know, you got to pay attention, you know, to these important tasks that, you know, have huge impacts on your business and getting new customers. Every restaurant needs new customers. You need a consistent flow of new customers in your restaurant to be successful. This is what does it, okay? This is like the number one way new customers are coming to your restaurant. They Google you and they see your reviews, you know, and a mobile phone is a search engine in itself. People will ask Siri, hey, Siri, where's a barbecue joint around here, right? So, oh, geez, I just activated my phone there. Um, I hate that. Uh, <laughs> I have Alexa. I have speakers all over my house with Alexa, and every blue moon we'll be talking about, like, making a joke about Alexa, and then I hear, doot, doot. I'm like, oh, I'm not talking to you. Oh, my gosh, she just brought up Famous Dave's. I just, she heard out, I got Famous Dave's, Texas Roadhouse, Billy Sims. I hate that. Where's the independence, man? I love the independence. Well, Cause the court, Forget you know why? Cause the corporates are doing this. Yeah. The corporates, the corporates are have someone attention. on salary in their office doing this and independents don't outsource it. Exactly. Outsource what someone can do cheaper, faster, quicker, and better and then focus on, you know, what you want to focus on and what makes you happy. I mean, it, for the simple fact uh, that, you know, if you're going to read an online review and, you know, I'm, you know, it's going to happen. You're going to get a, a negative review sooner or later if you haven't gotten one already. And it's like restaurant owners get so upset, you know, because I get it, right? It's you work there, uh, you put in massive amount of hours, it's your baby, you know, but you don't want, you want to turn that negative into a positive. There's a specific formula, which I shared with you, you know, a very basic formula. There's a lot more that goes into it than that, you know, to manage an, a reputation online. We take it very, very seriously. We take every review seriously, and every one of your reviews are read by a human being that's specifically trained in the restaurant industry 
and the review sites that they're answering for you. So, I mean, you know, that's the difference, right? There is no way I would have time as a restaurant owner to watch all this stuff, come up with, you know, responses to all this, you know, and claim an optima. I mean, it's just, you know, it's just overwhelming. It really, really is. So we're trying to give the independents the same amount of marketing power and put them on the same playing field as the corporates, you know, and for $297 a month, this program does that. So can we, uh, we get to a few questions here? Absolutely. I'm going to take a stab at a couple of these and then jump in. Obviously, you're the expert, but I've just had a little more time than you to read them and be prepared for them. So we've got one from Amit. Some of our competitors shoot to number one by using obviously fake reviews. Um, I mean, tell me if I'm wrong, but my response to that has always been, we'll get a ton more real reviews and that will always win on the fakes, the way that I, the, the, the trick to playing nicely with Yelp, you're never going to do anything, or you, I shouldn't say never, but you're going to have much less of a chance doing anything to get negative reviews or fake reviews gone. Just get more positive reviews. And the way we get more positive reviews is through a lot of the techniques that you're talking here. But the best technique I've ever seen is through a survey. And then from the survey, if it's positive, we send them to a review site because they've already said they like you. And if it's negative, we address the concern before they get to a review site. We're triaging it. And that's part of your system here. I know that. I know we didn't get into a ton of details, but anything to add on that? Yeah, absolutely. The other thing is, yeah, don't worry about it because you're going to drive yourself crazy. And the review sites are getting so much better at identifying fake reviews. Um, there's actually a software out there that will go through, if you're interested in buying a product, um, I mean, they're using it on Amazon right now uh, because this happens on Amazon with products as well because you're talking about millions of dollars. There's software out there that will analyze all the reviews for a product and tell you if they're fake reviews or not or how many. The, the review sites know this. They're getting so much better at it. But if you worry about this, you know, you're going to drive yourself crazy. Like you said, focus on doing a great job, you know, uh, uh, giving your customers an exceptional dining experience, one that they can't help but tell other people about. And then let me worry about managing your online reputation and getting you more positive reviews because that's a strategy, okay, a strategy for success. And that's what you need to compete with these big corporate monsters, you know, and, and, yeah, I got there's stories, Ryan. You know, you hear these stories. You, you hear them all day long. Oh, well, this guy, you know, down the street, all his employees are posting fake reviews. You know what? Review sites are getting really good at catching that stuff. And it it kills me when I get a client and they went and I got to fix it because they posted a slew of their own reviews, and it's so blatantly obvious that they posted their own reviews on their own uh, review sites. Don't do that. OK, because then I got to go back and fix it because review sites know with your IP address and a whole bunch of different things. So, yeah, we didn't even talk about that. Don't post your own reviews or have your employees post them on your website. No, you, you can do this. Yeah, you can do this for real. All right. You don't need to, you know, uh, supersede the system and do it, you know, in, in an unscrupulous manner. You know, you can win the game. Doing, I've showed you. I gave you a bunch of examples of our clients that are doing fantastic, that are rated number one on Google, number one on TripAdvisor, you know, in the top three, you know, on Yelp. They're doing it. We're doing it the right way. And that's so, that's what I'm about. Yep. Awesome. So we got Peter who says he's in. Peter signed up. That's awesome. So you'll be getting on the phone with Peter sometime soon. A um, couple of questions about claiming businesses on various sites. It's so tedious. Um, you know, go. I guess just quickly, if, if someone wanted to do this themselves, where could they, what do they do here? And then are there any tips that, so it's not so tedious? I think I know the answer to that, but I'll let you, I'll let you handle it. <laughs> yeah, you know what? Um, I get hired out just to claim Google or fix problems with Google um, because, it, it, yeah, I'm not going to, I'm not going to lie to you. It, it's tedious and it's not easy. And it, it's amazing to me before I started this company, it was like, you know, trying to find a human being that's ever talked to anybody at Google, right? Because, I mean, it's hard to get people on the phone and to fix stuff at Google. Um, and Google's like the, the number one. Yeah, it's, it, it, I'm not going to, you know, if you got a problem with Google, I do my best to try and fix it. 
sometimes we got to stay at it for, you know, weeks, sometimes months, depending on, you know, how screwed it up it is and how hard it is to work with Google. That's what we do. We know the tips. We know the tricks. We have Google reps that work with us, with our clients that fix things. There is no easy fix. It's You have to know, you know, what the specific uh, system is to claiming for each different site, and they're all different. So it, who was it, Nancy, that said that? Yeah, and yeah. then Candy had a question. So before before I was working with Michael and before I, I kind of knew some of this information, I'd been doing some research and learning it, and I was consulting with a steakhouse. And for the six months I was consulting with them, I was helping them with claiming and reviews and things like that. And in the six months I was there, we didn't get Google fully optimized because of some issues and challenges, but we got a whole bunch of others, about five or six others, and then I found out about some of this technology and they were able to claim all of the other sites, like all 50 other sites in like a week. So yeah. it's just it's just a matter of you know being good at what you do. People ask me all the time how, how I make that taste so much better than they do. I'm like, I don't know, 25 years of doing it. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, some people are good at some things because they've got the experience at it. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, there, yeah, there is a, a way that you can mass upload locations into Google and claim them all at once. But the other thing you got to remember, Ryan, this stuff might work today, but it changes like yeah. every day on the internet, right? Like they're all Google, and th this is the part that kills me. Facebook and Google, okay, they're the two biggest websites in the world. They fight against each other all the time because they want all the traffic. They, you know, Facebook wants all the traffic. In Facebook, Google wants all eyes on Google. So they're continuing the fighting. They update all the time. They change things. At, uh, with, and this is the part that kills me. They never tell you. They never tell you when things change. Okay, you got to figure it out for yourself. So that's what we do. We test, test, test. We know, okay, Google changed this. You got to do this. Google's changed the way people see your new your business your Google business listing like 10 times in the past two years there used to be like a carousel they called it you know on the top of Google if anybody remembers that you know with a bunch of different pictures and business listings and then you clicked on that one they totally got rid of that you used to be able to see seven businesses and you know under the map you used to have ads on the right side this stuff changes like all you got to be on it's a full-time job right that's why we're here you know because that's what we do we manage that so we got uh, Betty, I'm guessing that is, B-E-T-T-E, -T -T -E, Betty. Uh, Betty and Ashley from Bennigan's are jumping on board. So Peter, who signed up, he's got six restaurants, five in San Francisco, one in Berkeley. That's awesome. Amit, will this work internationally? I don't, yeah. Um, but here's a big question for you, uh, Michael. So we have two locations. One is a pop-up that we established for brick and mortar. The pop-up's been open, or is only open on weekends. And it's the first listing on Google, obviously shows closed most of the time. How do we get our main location to the top? One's been open a year longer than the others. Again, I have an answer for this, but I'm pretty sure you do too. I'll let you take it. Yeah, um, one, one of the things too, real quick with like pop-ups, as long as you have a physical address um, and it's not registered to another business, you know, you can get a Google business listing. I do that quite a bit for caterers. Um, so there's a lot of different tips and tricks. But I mean, to get a, a location, you know, to the top of Google, you got to be feeding that beast, man. You got to be feeding Pac-Man there with, you know, current, fresh information. And it, I'll be honest with you, and Google will tell you this: it's driven by reviews. You know, you got to generate some serious reviews if you're in a competitive environment, and you have to answer them back because that shows Google, you know, that the business is engaged, it's open. Google has, you know, these bots that crawl the internet you know, constantly just looking for more information. Like I said, it's like a Pac-Man just ready to eat up information about your business. Um, and the more you can feed it and the more current it is, and reviews are awesome for this. That's why I love reviews. You know, people go SEO, SEO, backlinks. You know, I need to, you know, embed terms on my website. Yeah, how about fresh information like reviews about your business? That's what Google wants. And it tells you that's what we want. So, yeah, I mean, my answer is going to be fresh information reviews. And the other thing is we didn't talk about this. And for those that, um, you know, take advantage and get it to the first 11, which I think we're getting real close here if we haven't surpassed it, um, that your website has to be mobile friendly. I mean, you you got to have a mobile friendly website or Google is oh. just going to kick you right down the list. 
what you just, I mean, mobile friendly and, and uh, for not getting technical, but an HTML menu. You can't have PDF menus, and you said that earlier. I mean, those are the two, like, claim your listings, get, get a mobile friendly website, get a, a, a menu that's searchable. I mean, those are things that need to happen, like, yesterday. Absolutely. And, and you know, I don't want to get technical, you know, right. website, web development's a whole other thing. Um, but we can go over, I do a lot of website reviews and analysis, um, you know, and a lot of it was, you know, it, because it flows right with your reviews, right? Like the, typically the way it goes, they Google your restaurant or they Google your style of restaurant. They see that you have good reviews and what do they do? They want to get more information, so they click through to your website, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. you need to have a very good new customer acquisition strategy for your website. It's got to be mobile friendly. You got to do a bunch of different things. If you know, we can go over this on the one-on-one -on -one, um, consultation, uh, and I'm very good at doing websites. That's one of the things that we do as well as you know websites. But it's got to be mobile friendly, man. It's got to be mobile friendly. So. I'm going to answer this question. Well, Lanya, it was already answered. I'm not open yet. Should I sign up? And I think Chris or Michelle, I'm not sure who's doing the moderating back there on your team, but they're doing a great job. Uh, yeah, she already answered that. But for, if anyone else out there is thinking the same thing, like we're not open yet, yeah, get claimed, get ahead of this, start the conversations with people. Um, yeah, you, you totally want to get this going. But the question that I want to address here, because this is this is this goes right to me to operations. This is a fun one: is how much should we spend on marketing, like percentage? So I, again, Michael, if you disagree, but the, what everyone else will tell you is like you should spend like two, four, six percent. But they're they're not asking you a really important question. It's sort of like prime cost. When someone says to me, "What should my cost of goods sold be?" I say, "I don't know." What's your labor? Or they say, "What should my labor be?" I don't know. Like I can only tell you what your prime cost should be because. The more products you make from scratch, the more labor you're going to have, but the less you're going to spend on purchases, right? They're inverse to each other. I look at rent or occupancy cost and marketing the same way. I can't tell you how much you should spend on marketing until I know what your rent is. And even that's a guesstimation. But the reason I say that is usually the more we pay on rent, the better location we have. And vice versa, if we don't have as great of a location, we have to spend a lot more money to generate traffic. And so the way that I just generally answer this is about 15%, roughly, again, about 15% should go to occupancy costs plus marketing. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. It's a very analytical way, you know, and a good guideline being an old restaurant guy from way back. Now, let me put my marketing hat on for a second here, Ryan. Um, so you know I own a marketing company, uh, and I uh, like this analogy. Marketing's an investment, right? So if I had a slot machine, and every time I yep. put a dollar in, I got $10 out, how many dollars am I going to want to put in that slot machine? Basically, as many as you can get yeah, your hands you on. got it, buddy. As, as many, many as, as I can. you can get your hands on. And so, you start borrowing them from friends. <laughs> exactly. So if I got a system in place right. that's generating sales and making me money, I'm gonna keep throwing money at it until it stops. So um, I, you know, I'm not an accountant. I don't claim to be an accountant. I leave that to you know you. You got an awesome system for cost control. I haven't found one better. Um, so you know you you kind of help out with that. But I, I got to put my marketing hat on for that question. Yeah, no, and I love that answer. And I just, some people, when they just look at it, they're like, oh, like, am I spending enough? Am I spending too much? Like, just ask yourself right now if you did just really, really quickly, just, you know, we did a $100,000 in sales last month. How much was rent? If rent was 10000 then roughly, roughly, you should be spending about five on marketing. Right. Um, because to your point, but you got to make sure you're doing it right. Just taking out an ad in a newspaper or giving, I mean, people are spending, how much is Yelp advertising now? I had a client who was spending $900 a month with Yelp for advertising, and they have no way of quantifying whether it works or not. For a third the price, you'll do all the work for them and quantify it within days or weeks that it is or is not working. So, exactly. And I yeah. mean, Yelp, man, once you get in, once you start giving them money, it's, it's all over. Yeah. I mean, I've heard horror stories like, you know, I was in the top 10 and I stopped giving them money and I don't know what happened. They're suppressing all my positive reviews and 
I've fallen off and they don't stop calling. And, you know, I have never, I, you know, I haven't had a client that successfully, you know, have given them money consistently and been able to justify their return. Um, so Yelp has an awesome sales program. Those guys will hound you. And I can almost promise you everybody that's listening right now has probably been contacted by Yelp rep. But what, I mean, if I can, if you can get the number one, you know, on Yelp or, you know, and right. the, at least on the, the front page in the top three, you know, and you got a awesome four to five star reputation with lots of reviews. I mean, you're, you're doing it organically, right? Like you're doing good and they're very good. Don't get me wrong. All these review sites, all, everything we've talked about here today has awesome analytics. They can tell you what people clicked on, how many people looked, you know, what, you know, what, what area they're from. Everybody has very good analytics. And we go over that, um, the online uh, reputation manager in my company with our clients. So, I mean, it's a great source of data and information where your new customers are coming from that you can use in other forms of marketing. Yep. So Amit asked, uh, TripAdvisor now has an advertising feature that gets you to the front of the page. I mean, that's the same as Yelp. Again, I'll take a stab at this from the operations standpoint. You take a stab at it from marketing. But for me, um, I always say hope is a strategy, just not a very good one. To me, advertising is passive. It's hope. We hope it works. We hope it gets people to look at it. I don't like doing anything that's passive. I like to take control of things. So I, I don't like to spend money on passive advertising, like where you just – put something out there because what's behind it? So that's kind of my answer is I'd rather push those dollars to something that's active, where you're in control of it, where you're you're talking to people, you're communicating to human beings, business is done human being to human being. Um, and when you're active and you're in control of the process, I think you'll get the exact same results that will have so much more inertia and weight behind them than just putting your restaurant on the front of the page. You know, you could have 200 reviews at four stars on the front of the page and pay for it. Or you can have a thousand reviews or 2000 reviews on the front of the page and not pay for it. And it's going to carry a lot more weight. Exactly. Yeah. I totally, I totally agree with you. Um, and I know TripAdvisor just, you know, they came out a couple months ago, you know, where the, yeah, they'll put your, um, you know, your listing on the front page or, you know, and it says sponsored everybody. I mean, people know, right? Like they know that's an ad. Yeah, you know, I mean, people aren't yep. stupid when it comes to review sites or anything online anymore. You know, hence my uh, two teenage daughters. You know, they they they're amazing of what they can do, especially with video. But they know, hey, that's an ad. You know, but if you're listed organically in the top three, then you know that carries so much more weight. And the TripAdvisor, yeah, it's not cheap. And what you were talking about was brand image uh, brand image marketing versus direct response. I don't do brand image marketing and I do more direct response. So, um, I mean, you know, there is a way to do brand image, but like you said, I look as marketing as an investment. You're making an investment, um, expecting a return, you know, an ROI. And that's what I like to play in. I, you know, that's a sandbox that I like to play in with my clients because they're small business owners, you know, they're independent restaurant owners and I just want to help them out, you know, with their marketing, be more successful and get more new customers. Yeah, so Jeff's got a good question here, and then maybe we'll take that as the last one. Sound good? Yeah, sounds awesome. All right. Um, marketing is hard to quantify. How do you know your ROI is in proportion? <laughs> I'll let you take that one. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? It, you know, it, it might be hard to quantify, um, but you can do it by overall gross sales. You can do it by specific time period. Um, you can do it. We like to do it with variables. You know, what did you change? Did you see an increase? You know, let's measure. Okay. And I, and like I said, everything online, I can tell you, you know, how many people are clicking, you know, what I can give you the days that they're clicking, you know, what exactly they're looking on. Um, you know, I love capturing data and information from, you know, customers for any business because then you can make things, you know, very quantifiable. So, you know, that's part of what we do as well, um, you know, with restaurant owners, we can work with them to, you know, figure out, you know, what the ROI is. But, you know, you had 3,000, you know, views on your Google business listing and they clicked on directions to your restaurant. These were the majority of the days. Let's look at your gross sales. Let's compare that, you know, to a previous uh, time frame, you know, and see if there's an increase there. What's your thought, Ryan? 
Yeah, I mean, I totally agree with Jeff. I mean, heck, I'm in digital marketing, and I mean, I have access to clicks, to everything. I just literally got an email from my Facebook advertising guy right now, and we have to extrapolate data sometimes, and we have access to a ton of data, but the point is, is I, have, I know how to do Facebook advertising, and I have a guy who does it, because I just don't want to do it, and he's better at it than I am. And he's the one who goes through and figures all this out. And like you said, sometimes we have to make educated guesses. We don't know 100% that because of the ad this happened, but we're definitely recognizing trends. We're scientific in how we do testing. We don't just do, we don't just say, hey, next month, let's, let's do a $10,000 billboard off the 405. Let's do this, let's do that, let's do that. And then we have no idea what worked. So we, we move things a little slowly. We're scientific. We try things. Right, we'll do a mailing to one zip code and then we'll do the exact same mailing to another zip code if we don't have the technology to do like barcode scanning with different offers or different phone numbers. I mean, dude, we can go crazy on this, but the point is you're a marketing guy, Michael. This is what your team does. You guys know how to do it. Absolutely, and this is what we love to do. I mean, we love managing online reputations and reviews for restaurants. So um, we get up in the morning and you know my online review managers come in and you know, they have a great time, um, you know, talking about reviews and figuring out the best way to, uh, you know, leverage this review and answer this review. And they're always talking about new strategies. So it's what we do. I really enjoy it. And it's a lot of fun. I love helping restaurant owners. Awesome. So um, really quick, I'm going to write this in. Uh, Peter wrote, thank you. Thank you so much, Peter. You're so welcome. I can't wait to, to get on the phone with you guys. Uh, can it but I, it can't be redeemed this week, for example. Uh, it looks like that was already answered. Um, so our, our cardio, uh, more of a operations question. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna put my email address. For anyone who needs my email address, it's ryan at therestaurantboss.com. And for every single email I send out, you can reply directly to one of those emails. Dan wrote, Rory would be proud. Um, is that the Dan I'm thinking it is? Michael? Uh could be yeah oh wow um, what an honor if it is <laughs> uh, who knows uh, yeah. there's a lot of there's a lot of franks in california i know and i, I don't want to <laughs> say i don't want to say dan's last name but if it's uh no like, no no, no. Not, i wouldn't i wouldn't i wouldn't do that yeah um if that is <laughs> if that is the dan i'm thinking i i am absolutely honored um rory would be proud that's that's kind of a, michael and i know who who that might be um if it is you shoot me an email man ryan at the restaurant that would be awesome but Anyways, Arcadio, yeah, Ryan at therestaurantboss.com. Love to chat with you. How can we get more information about the app building process? Uh, Michael, what website can people go to to learn more about or to reach out to you guys directly about some more digital stuff that they need? Uh, restaurant oh, Review is. Manager. Or info at Restaurant Review Manager. Yeah, Great. there you go. Great. So, you know, just reply to that or you can go to restaurantreviewmanager.com. Um, and there's also a link on the buy page at the ORMboss.com. So lots of different ways, or you can respond to any one of the reminder emails that you receive for the webinar. And we'll definitely get back to you ASAP. Yep, as will I. Uh, so we wrap it up here? Sounds good, Ryan. Thank you so much, man. This was a good time. We got to do this again. Thanks, buddy. Anytime. Yeah, because I know we have a few other things that we're going to want to work on for uh, coming up toward the end of the year there, right? No peaking and some other stuff. So you got it. Awesome. Well, everyone out there, thanks so much. For those of you who stuck around, if you haven't signed up yet, I don't know what you're waiting for. Uh, for those of you who did, awesome. Congratulations. Looking forward to it. And again, thank you, Michael, for doing this for uh, all of my followers, for not only educating them, but then also putting out that amazing offer that I know is not a public offer on your site. And uh, everyone else who helped out putting this together, fantastic. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Ryan. Have a good one. You too. Bye-bye.